What's going on everybody? You are watching another episode of Tech Tip Tuesday and in today's video we're talking tires. So the FE350 is in desperate need of some rubber. All of the sharp rocks in Arizona just absolutely eat through tires and the stock AT81s just weren't cutting it to begin with. I'm not a huge fan of those tires. They're all right for like the first hour of riding and then after that they just aren't really good at any particular thing they're just okay in everything now as far as tire choice goes as with anything riding related it all depends on what your goal is what are you going to be doing what terrain do you ride in for me being on the road and traveling we're going to be experiencing so many different kinds of terrain so i'm just looking for a good all-around tire also we do have plans to do some light dual sport riding we ride a lot of connecting trails there are going to be some times where we maybe have to hop on a highway and do 50 60 miles an hour for a short period of time. Pavement is a dirt bike tire's worst enemy. It doesn't take long to completely round off the knobs and all of the enduro guys will try their best to stay off of the road, but unfortunately we just don't have that option. So that left me with a few different ideas as far as tire choice. And I did end up getting two sets of DOT rated knobby tires. Now I haven't tried any of these. I wanted to switch it up. We ran the Tusk D Sports on the 300 and the 250L. And I gotta say, for the money, that is the best all around dual sport tire on the market. It's a little bit on the aggressive end, which is what I want. I want as close as you can get to a dirt bike tire, but with that DOT badge on it. That just means it's been designed for road use. The compound is normally a little bit harder and being on the road, a longer lasting tire is nice. So on the FE350, we're gonna be trying out the Motaz Enduro Tractionator ST. To be honest, the first time I heard about it was through Jake the Garden Snake, and I know he was happy with his tire, so I wanted to give him a shot. It's got Enduro in the name, so hopefully it performs well off-road, and we're gonna be putting it to the test tomorrow, so we'll see. I don't know if I'm gonna be installing the front and rear, because the front still has some life left. That's normally how it is. You're gonna burn up your rear first. This is where all the power happens and the most abuse. With the KTM, we're also trying something new, and we went with a set of golden tires. The front is a fat tire, and I actually rode a Shinko fat tire, and I absolutely loved it. That's what I had when I did my Colorado trip, and it was definitely a different feel. It took a little bit of getting used to. It kind of liked to ride up the sides of the single track. Just with that little extra grip, it was noticeable, but I am a fan of fat front tires. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever ran one. What do you say? What do you think of the meats? Big meats? Larry Hoover. The go-to for a while was the Shinko Cheater tire. So the 505, the 525, they were super gummy and good for this terrain. Now I know a lot of people around me now are running an Ibex tire, the VE33S. I've tried the VE33 personally, great tire. But here in Ohio, the softer, the better, and the gummy tires are king. But yeah, I'm not here to ramble on about tires. There's a million freaking options. Drop your favorite tire down in the comments below. How about that? This video is focused on installing tires because it can be a pain when you're first learning. So first things first, if you aren't living on the road and you have a garage, shop, somewhere to work on your bikes, I highly recommend getting a stand. It makes it so much easier. You're off of the ground, not on your hands and knees, destroying your body. Especially with having a bum leg, this thing has been awesome. It's from Tusk. They make really good affordable products it will be linked down below so we already got the tire off the bike let's go ahead and throw it on the stand I don't think I'll add it as one of the numbers but clean your bike clean your wheels before you do this I didn't just because we're going riding today and it is absolutely filthy so I know I'm gonna have a long detail ahead of me but I'm already regretting it because this thing is just covered in dust and that's going to get inside your wheel and it's just not pretty so clean your stuff but we're going to go ahead and remove the valve core get all that air out of there go ahead and get that rim lock loosened so tip number one on my list is use plenty of lube. Also using the right kind of lube. I know a lot of people use soapy water, WD-40, but once you use an actual tire lube, you will not go back. This is from Murphy's. I got this tub on Amazon and it's lasted me forever. So I'll link this as well. You can also get a smaller size. On the road, I just have a little container that I put some of this in, but it's a very dry lube. It doesn't leave a mess. It dries up easy and it really makes these tire installs a breeze. 
Next we'll talk about tire irons or spoons. I actually use the lever style. This is what I carry on me in my pack. If I ever had a flat on the trail, this is what I would use. There are dozens of different options, but I really do like how slim these are. The only downfall is you don't get a lot of leverage. So I'll link a few different options down below, but out of all of these spoons and levers that I've used, I always find myself coming back to these, at least for dirt bike tires. So in this mounting, I start on the opposite side of the rim lock. Personally, I do not use rim protectors. I think they're a joke. I think they're more of a headache than a help. And at the end of the day, it's a dirt bike. Your wheels are gonna get scratched anyways. But with a little finesse, you can do this without scratching your wheels. You can also wrap some electrical tape on the ends of the lever. I've seen people do that, but I generally just do not worry about it. Cause like I said, it's a freaking dirt bike. But you just wanna go all the way around the tire, get that bead broken loose. And a term you're gonna hear me refer to is the drop center. So that is the innermost portion of the wheel. And when mounting and dismounting, it's gonna be key to keep the opposing side that you're trying to get off in the drop center. So the rim lock is over here. I'm gonna get this side in the drop center. And we actually have a tool that's gonna help us with that. And it is called the Bead Buddy. Once again, link down below. I was kind of skeptical about this at first, but if you're doing this by yourself and you have no one to help you keep the opposite side in the drop center, this thing's really nice just to slide in there. It wraps around the spoke, get it in there like so, and it keeps the bead right in the drop center. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the opposite side here, and we're gonna get this bead over the wheel and start the process. Once again, I love this stand. You can put your feet on the legs here and just get some extra grip. Pull her over, boom, she's a little tight on there. At a minimum, I would be using three levers. So little bites is key. You can't get too small because you can't get your lever in there. So the further that you go, the easier it gets. And boom, that is side number one complete. Go ahead and flip her over. We're gonna do the same thing. Now I've seen a lot of people, mostly boomers, try to take the tire off the same side as you broke the first bead. Now I've never done it that way. I've always struggled way more trying to do that. So I literally just do it the same way and the wheel falls on the inside of the tire and then you can just pull the wheel out. So same thing as before. I'm gonna get the opposing side down in the drop center. Boom, there it goes. Don't even need the bead buddy now. You can actually use the sprocket or the rotor to hold your lever. I actually do recommend wearing safety glasses when doing this because I have had a lever fly at my face before and almost lose an eye because of it. Holy shit. Good times. I have fought tires a lot over the years and don't get me wrong, I still do. But it's one of those things where the more you do it, the better you're gonna get. So you just gotta get out there and practice. Now for street bike tires, it's a little bit different. Normally the wheels are pretty expensive too. So that is something that I usually just take to a shop. I've only spooned a couple and it's even less fun. It all comes down to having the right tools and the tools that I have are primarily for dirt bikes. Boom, we are ready to throw this thing on the ground. And now you can just pull the wheel out like so. And we should be able to reuse this tube. Biggest thing that sucks about tires is disposing them. Nobody around here takes them for free, so you gotta pay to dump them at most places. <clears throat> or you can just set them on fire. So tip number two is use the right tools for the job. If you don't have the right tools, you got some automotive spoons, you're using weird things, it's just not gonna work out for you. So use the right tools, go down in the description, pick some of these things up, and it's gonna make your tire changing experience a whole lot better. Now that we got the tire off, I'm gonna inspect the wheel a little bit. The rim tape is intact, I would hope so. The bike only has like 10 hours on it. Now it's gonna be extremely easy if you don't have a rim lock, but this does make it a little bit harder. It's a necessity for running low tire pressures. Some people will even run two or even three rim locks depending on what kind of tube or mousse setup you run. Take my paperwork off the old Motaz. And dude, let me tell you, this thing is aggressive. The lugs on this are super deep. This is a directional tire. So another tip, make sure you have the right orientation. The sprocket side, rotor side, figure out the direction that your wheel's gonna be turning. Line that up with the arrow. I've actually installed one backwards before. Most tires, it doesn't make that big a difference. Especially on this, the tread pattern is pretty much symmetrical. But just keep that in mind, save yourself the headache. So tip number three when installing tires, 
get these things warm before you try to install them. There's been a number of times where I had to install these in the winter, last second, and dude, when they are cold, they are so stiff. It just makes it that much harder. So if it's a sunny day, go leave it out in the sun. If not, put it inside the house for a bit. I got a wood stove out here, so that's what I started to do in the winter is I would just hang it up over the wood stove, rotate it a couple times, give it an hour or so, and it really does make a big difference. Also, the softer the tire is, if it's a gummy tire, it's generally easier. This does feel pretty Pretty soft for a DOT tire, so I'm excited to run this. I went with a 130 90 18 for the rear. I try to get a little bit wider normally. I kind of prefer the 130 or even the 140 over the 120. That's a bit debatable, but for me, the more meat, the better. I like more meat. It's a bit sus. But as far as prepping the tire, going back to number one, the lube. So no, don't put tire lube in there. Use baby powder to keep the tube from chafing. If you're running the moose or the tubeless, this is irrelevant, but get a good amount of baby powder in there. That'll keep your tube from chafing and reducing pinch flats. Smells good too. And now is where the lube is gonna come into play. So as you can see, the consistency of this tire lube is pretty damn weird. Like I can stick my finger in it and it's a little bit sticky, but it doesn't really stick to you. It's weird. Most of the time I just get it on a shop towel, scoop a little bit out, and then just apply it around the bead. A little bit goes a long way with this too, which is why I haven't used hardly any of it. Flip it around, get the other side as well. Boom, and just like that, this thing is slipping off the wheel. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and put the tube inside of the tire. I'm gonna put the rim lock in there. I'm gonna get the nut started on the rim lock. Then I'm gonna push the valve stem through, get that started just a little bit. And now we're gonna come back over here to this rim lock and this is the part that can be the most frustrating, but you just gotta take your time. So instead of ending on the rim lock, I like to start on the rim lock. Once I get those started, I'll go ahead and go over here, get my bead buddy set up. And you wanna get that underside bead over. It's like one more bite and then we're home free. We're moving pretty fast here, so I'm sorry if I lost you, but here's where that second or third spoon comes into play. Man, I just pushed that on there. This was an easy tire to install. And that is tip number four. Don't fight it. If you are fighting the tire, you are doing something wrong. Your bites are too big. You need to soften this thing up a little bit first. You didn't use enough lube. I myself personally have bent levers before, almost broke them by torquing on it so much. And that just means you're not doing something right. So that's like one of my most important tips is just don't fight it. Take your time, think about what you're doing, try different things if it's not working, but just manhandling it, you're not gonna have a good time. And you also risk damaging the bead, popping the tube. Also something that I skipped, you should put a little bit of air in the tube before you put the tire on. That will help you reduce pinching it while you're using the levers. But I'm gonna go ahead and air this thing up and see if we made any mistakes. I think we nailed it. We'll fill it up to like 20 to set the bead. Boom. I'm gonna take it off, bang it on the ground. I still haven't tightened down my rim lock yet. Ugh. Wipe off some of that excess lube. And boom, we got a finished product. We're right at 11, so that is what I'm gonna run this weekend. I will report back if we have any flats, but that's gonna lead me into tip number five. Well, let's go ahead and tighten down this rim lock now. Well, that pretty much wraps things up. And tip number five is just practice. I know it's cliche, but that's the only way that you're gonna get better at installing tires. There are still some things that I struggle with. The biggest thing is just patience. When you're rushing, when you're fighting the tools, it's just gonna slow you down. So ultimately take your time, give yourself plenty of time. Don't be changing tires the night before the ride. God, the amount of times that I've been doing that, like two, three in the morning before a ride. Don't do that, give yourself plenty of time. 
practice. Like I said, I like to use the tools that I'm gonna be using in the field, so I definitely recommend that. But if you guys or girls have any other tips, leave them down in the comments below. I'm sure it can help somebody out, even myself. But that's gonna do it for today's Tech Tip Tuesday. Until the next one, live free and adventure daily.